All right, today we're going to learn how to core a tree. Um, as you've probably seen, if you've ever seen a tree stump, there's a series of rings, light wood, dark wood, alternating, and that light and dark wood represents one year of tree growth. Now, when you look at it as a stump, it looks like a series of rings, but actually, if the, as the tree is growing, it's putting on cones of wood, very uh, long, skinny, stretched out cones. So the tree kind of tapers as it goes up. Um, but as I said, when you cut it in cross section, it does look like rings. You got to kill the tree in order to, to see those rings from the stump. So that's not always uh, advantageous. So what we're going to use today is what's known as an increment bore that allows us to extract uh, about a pencil size, smaller than a pencil size, uh, tube uh, core of, of wood and look at the rings that way. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of information about this tree before we get started. Um, it's uh, diameter at breast height, DBH, uh, diameter at breast height, and everybody has the same height breast, 1.37 meters or about four and a half feet. So that's where we're going to measure it. Um, with this tree, it's actually on a slope a little bit. So where do you measure? Up at the top or down at the bottom where it's, where it's lower, where there's been some erosion? Uh, and the answer is on the side. So we're going to do all our measurements on the side of the tree. Um, this tree is too big for me to reach around, so I'm going to use this DBH tape and I'm going to hook it in there. It's got a little hook on one side and walk it around. One side of this tape is just a standard meter tape, um, just measured in centimeters and little millimeters in, in between there. Um, but if this tree was a circle, right, I'd be measuring its circumference. Right? And because we know the circumference, we can work out uh, 2 pi r and figure out the radius and diameter. But the tape does that for us. So on one side, it's a regular uh, meter tape. And the other side, it says diameter in centimeters and millimeters numbers are more spread out. So what it's doing is it's converting the circumference into diameter. So I'm going to read from that side. So if you're doing this, make sure you use the side that says diameter on it um, to get the proper measurement. Okay, so here's my breast height. And again, I'm going to kind of stick it in there, kind of walk around the tree. Back again. Um, make sure that it's all kind of even and then i'm just going to read the number off where the zero mark meets the number on the tape above it and so this tree is 59.8 centimeters so 59.8 centimeters around wind it back up and be careful with that sharp point all right this is an increment bore. I'm gonna fold it up right at this point, at this point. So I unscrew and the bore itself can slide right out. This is the spoon, we'll talk about that later. Okay. It's got a little latch on one side, so I'm gonna flip open the latch and that enables me to stick the bore through there. It's kind of a square on that end, stick it through and then clamp it down and I actually have a little rubber o-ring that I slide over here to keep that latch in place sometimes it wants to pop open on me now we should say that um, we're really not going to damage the tree or hurt the tree um, you just think about maple syrup right we're uh, tapping into the maple trees um, very little part of the tree is actually uh, living cells so most of this tree if we were to um, look inside of it is is dead wood it's just the very outer ring that actually has live cells conducting cells um, and trees are very good at um, kind of uh, protecting themselves against that so um, it can kind of compartmentalize that injury so we don't really need to worry about damaging the tree uh, it's trees on a slight angle here all right, so uh, hardwood trees like this oak um, will put on tension wood up slope, actually kind of pull the tree to get it to grow straight. So going straight up to the light. So the center of the tree, what we call the pith, might not be in the exact center of, of 
the tree, the physical center of the tree, the geometric center, if you will. So sometimes you have to kind of eyeball it a little bit, maybe move up slope a little bit, kind of get a feel <laughs> where, where the center of the tree is. We're going to take two cores. Right? And so if you take a look at the first one coming out and you've, and you've missed the center, if you've missed pith, sometimes you can use that as a guide to, okay, I got to move it up a little bit next time and uh, try to get it on the second core. And the reason we're taking two cores is because uh, sometimes a tree uh, will put on false rings um, in which the tree seems like it's stopped growing, but then maybe it's a cold snap, um, but then it, it warms up again and the tree will start growing and um, it'll, it'll look like an annual growth ring, but it's really just a kind of a thickening within a particular year. So by taking two cores, it helps you identify that comparing the two cores. And sometimes a tree will actually put on what's known as a missing ring, where if the tree has experienced a very stressful year, it might not put a ring completely around. So it might be just a partial ring. And so if I core on one side, I'll see more rings than if I were to core on the other side. And so again, taking two cores, one from each side, helps you uh, watch out for that. And we'll learn about that back in the lab. And you know, with two cores, you can kind of get average growth conditions with the tree. So kind of average the two con uh, trees together. All right, so we're gonna core. Uh, can't, obviously, the lower you go on the tree, uh, the closer you get to its true age. Every year, the tree is putting on a ring as it grows higher and higher. So if I cored way up here, I might miss several years um, that it took the tree to grow that high, right? So I wanna go down as low as possible. Uh, for most, for a lot of, uh, if I'm trying to get a uh, most accurate age, that is. I can't go too low though, because you start getting these root flares and the, and the wood of the tree is uh, a little bit different down there, a little bit odd growth form. So we want to avoid that. Obviously I'm going to have to be spinning this thing around, so I don't want to clunk it into the ground either. So I'm going to go about a meter up. Um, so avoid this um, flared wood and give myself some room. With this hardwood, um, later on we're going to core a pine tree, and that's pretty easy softwood to catch in that, uh, catch the threads into the wood. With harder woods like an oak, uh, sometimes it's a little tricky to get the thing started. And so this device here is just a way to put some pressure on it while you're coring. So I'm going to see where I'm going. I'm pressing a little bit, uh, leaning on it, and that gives me two hands free, right? So I'm putting pressure, which helps the, the bit catch. Okay, so threads have caught. We're engaged, the threads are in there. Don't need that starter anymore. So now I'm just gonna crank it in. Some people, um, will core on a slight angle, just a very slight angle, so that, for instance, rainwater drains out instead of uh, catching in there. You can either go straight in or with a slight angle. You wanna go, make sure you go to the pith, to the center, um, and gotta realize that the pith isn't always right in the exact geometric center of the tree, so you might want to go a little bit beyond what you think is a halfway point. The uh, question is, how do you know when you're in halfway? And you can use the spoon to help us with that. So the spoon, is, we'll, we'll, we'll look a little, see what its uh, use is in a little bit, but it slides inside the bore, so it's the same length as the, as the bore. So I can hold it up on the outside Say, I'm not quite halfway in yet. Another way that you can judge is if I stick it in, right, I'm hitting the wood so it stopped at this distance. So this much of my spoon is, is outside the tree, which means that this much is what's in, inside the tree, if it's the same length as this bore. So this is the part that's inside the tree. I can kind of hold it up and I'm not beyond halfway yet. My end of my spoon isn't beyond the halfway point. So I got further to go. 